What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Veilcast, episode number 12. And today we are talking about all the exciting stuff that we really hope to see in Camel Unchained for PvP. We're going to talk about other games that you may have played, compare the good and the bad, uh, systems, mechanics, all that sort of stuff that we're really excited to see, hopefully, in Camel Unchained. We also have a couple of, I don't know, little screen grab video of the new building destruction. Yep. Super excited about that. Let's go ahead and go around the corner. Chris, tell me how you doing today, man. What are you ex looking Much at? Much better. Do I know you were Much, sick? Your yeah. Your throat was killing you? <laughs> yeah. I was sick for a half, a week and a half, uh, but I'm much better now, and I'm really excited with uh, all the, even small uh, as as they are, uh, the updates we're getting. Uh, I know to the game. Yeah, I mean, super awesome stuff. Uh, looking yep. forward to that. And Velik, how you doing, Zeno Duck? I am doing fairly well. I got a bit of a headache, but aside from that, <laughs> I'm doing good. Uh, <laughs> I'm excited to talk about other games and hopefully talk about some good stuff <laughs> right instead of, yeah instead of uh gripe spending the whole time i know i know last week was so. i know last <laughs> week was a little grumpy but we are excited about the game and because there's not a ton of information out we can't play the game and show the game and all this stuff um comparing it to other games we have played gives us kind of a sort of reference point right a, a base that we can mm -hmm. say we like that we didn't like that let's go ahead and jump <laughs> right in i mean we've got a lot of things we can talk about but i guess I guess we could start with what are other PvP focused games that you have enjoyed that have this type of combat? What did you like about it? What did you want to bring in like to Camel Unchained? That's a wide question. I know, right? <laughs> Velik, yeah. you were talking about, I mean, we talked about Warhammer Online, ESO has similar combat, Guild Wars 2 has similar combat. I can't really say I have a ton of stuff from Warhammer Online I would want to bring over. I did really enjoy the the open nature of their siege, of, of the castle sieges and stuff. Right. Uh, and I really enjoyed those for a while, but they did get kind of dull after a while because it, it was kind of rudimentary at the time. I mean, at, well, at now. At the right. time, it was, you know, it, it was different. It was great. Um, mostly, I really enjoyed, I really enjoyed Tiso's PvP to a certain extent for a while. Right. <laughs> Eventually, certain problems just got a little bit grating. Well, let's talk about that. Right. You just said PvP. I know there's a topic uh, a lot of people talk about, the difference between PvP and RVR, because there is a big difference, right? PvP, player versus player. You can see that in arenas and WoW, even battlegrounds where it's 10 on arenas. 10. There's a big difference, because I think a lot of people who aren't looking at the game, when this comes out, they're going to be like, whoa, what is this? RVR yeah. is a massive sort of like whole world kind of thing going on right there's a huge massive battles right oh chris just died your camera my friends oh there you go there it um is. so i mean vela go ahead and keep saying what you're talking about but how does that play into you think being rvr focused and not just not just pvp right well i think at least for me first we have to decide kind of define what we mean by the difference between rvr and pvp for me it's a matter of scale Right. Any game, any MMO can have PvP either in battlegrounds or you know even in larger scale like something like Alterac Valley where it's larger. Um, to a certain extent, you could even argue that anything that's not particularly persistent is just PvP. Even if it's on a larger scale, and you're just you know you go in there, you do a fight, and in a week or two weeks or whatever, it's over. Uh, then it's kind of blurring those lines. Uh, but for me, RVR is a persistent and large scale sort of um, type of PvP, where it's not just one player on one player. I think that's the emphasis. And I think the key to this, which I, which, um, sorry, lost my train of thought. I think the key to this in PvP versus RVR is that PvP, you try to balance a single player against a single player, right. which almost always fails in the grand scheme of things. You can't do it. Every, one make one player capable of defeating every other class. In RVR, you don't have to do that because it's more about balancing the group as a whole against the other group. Right. It's your whole realm against another realm. Yeah. I think it adds in factors to like economy, um, massive warfare... Uh, siege siege items and stuff i mean i don't know if i've ever played a game where a battleground or arena had siege weapons um yeah these sorts of massive battle chris what do you, what do you think is the difference because a lot of people I, forget that it's not pvp it's rvr yeah for me pvp is more 
uh, as Valek said, in a way, uh, the player against player. It's in PvP. The 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 main goal is pretty much uh, smashing the other one in the face and winning by kill count. Right. Uh, in RVR, it's a more strategical game. It's more uh, strategic objectives to find to uh, to benefit the meta rather than just the fights. Right. The fights are a big element, but the, they're one element of the whole strategy, not just the main focus. That's what really got gets me excited by with uh, RVR more than PvP, which is just a fight. That's uh, RVR is the real battle. It's not just killing not people just over fight. and over. It's exactly. territory control. It's <clears throat> economy. The economy can factor into exactly. the war. Like, hey, we're beating you mm -hmm. because you don't have any weapons because we were smart enough to take all your mines and have, yeah. Have I think uh, I think one air one thing games wise for other games that really kind of puts this in perspective. To me, games like um, the Elder Scrolls Online. And, they don't really uh, have that though. It's just I was killing. I was thinking of uh, oh th the Elder Scrolls Online and Planet Side. Right. These are both yeah. very large scale, two huge mm -hmm. armies from different factions yeah. fighting against each other. But it's all about kill count. They're swarming right. in. They're just killing, kill, 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 kill large groups of people. Maybe you smash a wall. There are some tactical decisions. They're trying to make it RVR, but to me, it's it it didn't quite succeed at true RVR because it just turns into just killing people, and that's it pretty much the main fast. objective. And, and, there's, and there's some resources. Flip too fast. Yeah, there's some resources and stuff that do play in. But then you take something, which is kind of funny in, in a certain regard. You take something like EVE Online. That's the closest where, thing we have, right? Where there are different factions, but those factions aren't necessarily in, an, in a faction realm versus realm battle. Right. But it's, it's all about cor player corporations. But at the same time, you have all these different considerations in there. I mean, you can crush someone economically. You can really cripple their position and then come in and, and, and work against them. Your entire faction, which in that case would be right. like your corp or something, is plotting and doing different tactics against, their, against your enemies, which can be an entire huge area of people. And um, in certain respects, that's more RVR <laughs> than other other RVR games that we might look at, which I would consider to be almost more PvP, just because that's all they're really worried about for the most part. It devolves into just a kind of a mindless smashing of, of individual yeah. on individual. E and the, they want everyone to be able to kill everyone. Even the strategy, like you're talking about in ESO, when you strategize to take down a wall, really you're just doing it to kill more players. I mean, what is Eve the best comparison we have to this sort of global uh, warfare RVR sort of economy and resources? And I, I don't think I played. I mean, even I played Dark Age of Camelot, which is kind of based off of. But I mean, 15 years ago it was great, but that was still just killing people. There weren't uh, there weren't resources and yeah, things like that, you know. I think it, yeah, it I all think it's the closest down to we have. <laughs> I mean, it does yeah. all eventually devolve down to killing people. That's right. what it all eventually comes down to. Yeah. I think it's to me, it's a it's the balancing aspect more than anything. If if the game is trying to make it so every one person, no matter your class is, can possibly kill every other person, they're focusing on the wrong thing. You know, they're focusing on to make it RVR anyway. They're focusing yeah, on the right. wrong thing to make it RVR. It's about the whole group. In Eve Online, you know, everyone has their purpose. Not everyone is good at everything. Everyone has their own purpose. You go to Planet Side, everyone can. They have their own purposes and their own uses. But for the most part, everyone's supposed to have the capability really to kill every other class. That's yeah. kind of how it works. Then right. you go to Tiso, and they, you know, there are specialties. But for the most part, you know, just about any class can still kind of kill any other class. It's the rock paper scissors type thing sort of but not fully right and i'm even thinking about games like guild wars 2 you're killing people and taking keeps um but really you're doing that just to get numbers on a board that don't really mean anything yeah. right even warhammer online same sort of thing you're killing people and you might get a little reward um but it's still just right it, it misses all this economy this meaning this yeah. especially this is, it's also one of the important facts uh, that also makes that devolve into uh, kill counts is because you get gear out of that. You get stuff. Uh, the, the kill count and the leaderboard in the end is a goal to get more stuff to be more efficient in PvP. Right. So that that's why it also devolves in just kill counts. And most people, even in ESO where you have kind of 
uh, objectives, strategical objectives, it still devolves in kill counts because the more you kill, the more PvP points you get, the better gear you can get. Right. Yeah, I was going to say that um, Warhammer Online, that's actually one area where I felt Warhammer Online did a good job, is that everyone was really specialized into what they did. Um, and actually, a lot, of my, a lot of my opinions on how stealth should work in Realms and, and I keep saying I want to say Realms State, in Camelot Unchained, right. comes, <laughs> fr comes from Warhammer Online. Because I, I remember having, um, I remember some of the stealth classes in there. You go, you go into combat, you're squishy as hell. But you could pop out in combat, kill a healer, take out a very valuable you know, enemy unit, Right. And you're probably going to die for it. But that's right. what your purpose is, is to jump in there, pick a valuable target, and take him out, and then hope you get away with it. You're probably not going to, unless you're really good or really lucky. Right. But, you know, people were specialized in that faction. Uh, not everyone was good against everyone. Everyone, you worked as a unit. Everyone had their purpose within the unit to make the faction better. Right. Mm -hmm. And so when we talk about, I mean, I think this is a really interesting topic because people always have these preconceived notions of just a huge map where they PvP all day. Well, yeah, you can just fight people, but there's so much more involved in this sort of RVR whole game. And I think that's why EVE, you see EVE is, has been super successful as a subscription game. They've increased subscribers. It's going on for years and years because these people are invested, not just killing people over and over, but it's all part of this bigger economy world type fighting right it's really awesome let's go ahead and we'll, we'll top jump into another topic that i think is really uh controversial a lot we can talk about um what about resurrection because oh, it, we're talking about <laughs> pvp versus that, rvr that, yeah. most pvp games you're in a battleground you're in an arena you die you respawn right away in 10 seconds you're back in the fight yeah it's not going to work like that at all in this game right I yeah. really hope not. I really hope. It can't. I really break want it, Resurrection right? to yeah, yeah, exactly. be a restricted sort of thing because I want <clears throat> death to be a penalty. I want death yes. to be a. I want there to be a penalty and punishment related to death. I don't think it has to be terrible, but we, one thing we've talked about a lot is um, you know travel time and like the RVR map. And I see travel time as a punishment for death. Sometimes right. when you die, you might have to walk back, and that's that's exactly. pretty terrible. And that could hurt your faction because you're trying. Because one thing I want to avoid is seeing the siege battles where people just keep respawning in the keep, running back to the wall, fighting. They get you killed. They run back to the wall. They you're fight. Respawning in the keep. Uh, that's the it. one thing I really don't want. You can't that's, respawn in the keep if you die. Yeah, that's one thing I really like from Planet Side and Planet Side Two, is because yeah. when there's conflict, you can't do that. You know, people or there's like a strategic place in the keep. Somebody can sneak in there, hit it. You can't respawn in there anymore. It becomes a strategic objective. Exactly. They can cut off your respawn. Now, admittedly. Planet uh, one, planet side allows you to respawn and get right back in the action, which sucks. Yeah. Uh, which is good for an FPS game. Would suck here for mm -hmm. me. Two, Tiso tried to do this with the forward camps and they <laughs> failed. It was awful. It was so, so bad they took it out. Caveat there. Right. <laughs> I mean, the problem is yeah. when you have a massive battle. The idea like this, was good. Right. And, and when the you have a massive was... battle, when people die and they're able to jump back in the fight right away, it takes away all meaning. You, if you know you can die and then respawn and be right back, it's like you just start running at the walls. You just pile bodies up and you're just dying. Exactly. You need it to take time where the defenders, if they death has to have a meaning. What about, I mean, so you, you think we can't res in the keep. So the attackers and the defenders have to res far away and then run all the way back. That adds more interesting that, gameplay, right? You can kill the respawn. And that makes sieging yeah. meaningful. Right. Sieging becomes meaningful. And you can break a siege. Uh, if from the outside, you can break the siege from behind while the defender hold the keep and another force arrives behind you. If you don't respawn instantly, you break the siege. You yeah. you make a hole in the, in the sieging force and you can break the siege. And the same, if you respawn instantly in the keep, how, can, how does the attacker can take the keep you can't because yeah. the defenders the defending force is endless right the way i see it they ha you really kind of have two generic possibilities with that which there's a lot of variation <clears throat> but you have you have two generic kind of po potential solutions one you can have people be able to spawn in or near the keep in the middle of a fight 
in which case the attackers also have to have some sort of a mobile spawning location, which can potentially be a, an objective in PvP to take out, but they have to have some sort of a mobile spawning location to even the scales. I don't like that. Because it has to be balanced. I don't like or, What's the next one? Or, like you do, or you don't, the other option, you don't allow a respawn in the keep, and the assaulting team does not have a mobile respawn location, and thus you're still retaining what, balance. What about, I mean, we know we're going to have dedicated healers. This isn't a kind of a, this is a real hard Trinity system, right? Dark Age yep. Camel, you had healers who could resurrect people. What if it, I mean, what, how do you guys feel about that? If you're in combat, out of combat, does it take 10 seconds? Does it, because then um, you have people actually res, doing it. Yeah, res has to take a long time. Right. Honestly, if if death has to be meaningful, you can have an, a battle res in ten seconds. You you res one person, and every two minutes you can res another person. Uh, that's not enough. Uh, it has to be something that takes time. Even something like a ritual. Yeah, you can res two people, but it's f for the next ten fifteen minutes. You can't do it anymore, and it takes a minute or two to actually res those people. So maybe yeah, the I veil, like, they, like 10 people get together, they summon the power of the veil, and then, exactly. and then it uses up all the veil power in that area or something like that. Exactly. I can maybe possibly, a one-time thing. I can possibly be okay with certain classes being able to res people in combat or near combat. Uh, and I would prefer that over respawning in, keep, in the keep that's being attacked and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so long as it has a longer cast time, it's not something you can just, oh, I respawn you, I respawn you, I respawn you. It must keep that person vulnerable. Right. While they're casting, so other people can come in there and take them out. I don't want to see like a long range res where someone's like, "I'm 30 feet away and I'm resurrecting you from way over here." Right. You know, yeah. I don't want I don't want to see that kind of stuff where they can do it safely away from the combat. If you want to go out there and res somebody in the middle of combat, and one of like say a stealth character is going to see you doing it, come up behind you and stab you in the back of the head, that's perfectly fine with me, right. it's, it, or it can be anyway, depends well, on the, how they did it. With the ability but, building system, you can have checks and minuses. Where what if it's instant? An instant res in combat, right? But maybe it takes ninety percent of your health to do it. Yeah, you know I mean, like you can have these checks and balances S to make it sacrificing yourself to yeah. res somebody else, right? Like I would say that's not worth it for a healer. I'd rather have a healer, <laughs> yeah. but so, right. I, I, you know, I could see it maybe. <laughs> what about? Let me ask you, Chris. What about crafters building some sort of magical thing? Defibrillator. Right, that uh, <laughs> uses the power of the veil to resurrect people. That is adding to the crafter that power. Might be a possibility, but it it had it would be something that is actually big, clunky, something that you can't move. Right. Uh, maybe uh, one of the things I really loved in EQ as a as a rogue was that I had to drag corpse because in EQ your stuff stayed on your corpse, so you had to sneak inside the dungeon, for example grab the corpse and drag it to the person to get rezzed. Maybe something like that. Be Somebody has to drag the corpse to the machine to have it rezzed. And you use up charges. Right. Like souls from the enemies as charges to rez your own defenders. That could be really fun. Because then strategically, you have to push the back line back. The tanks have to hold it. Other people have to grab your people and pull them back exactly. to your keep. It could add... I mean, just One like... Thing I can see like being vulnerable, like combat resing can to me actually be fun if you're vulnerable doing it and stuff. Because I remember at this again, totally not even an MMO, uh, playing America's Army, first person <laughs> shooter game. Uh, I used to play that game and I would always play as the medic if I could, um, because I was committed to it. They'd go into <laughs> they'd go into a fight and somebody cr get shot and they cry out. And in that game, if you got shot, it pretty much it pretty much took you out. I mean, you you're pretty messed up. And so somebody would cry out, medic, and I would. Would go sprinting across the battlefield with bullets <laughs> flying and everything run over there try to hide in close to him be like oh crap somebody's gonna get me i'm healing you real quick i'm healing you real quick <laughs> it was fun for me that way right it adds to adds one thing to the game we part. also have to consider though is we we talk a lot about res but in the lore of the game we're immortal so we don't actually That's die <laughs> So it may just That's be a matter of being unconscious and being revived as well. But then how do they resolve that with maybe dying and then respawning in another they, location? I don't know. Are they That's immortal? Weird. Are people immortal? Yes. Yes. Really? I, yes, I guess are. I missed that part. I don't remember. Yes, we are. The, ve the Veil that. Storm made us immortal. 
The, the emissaries coming through the veil yes, storm the made us immortal so that we would have the ability to repopulate in the you know messed up world. And then, of course, we used it to make war on each other because that's totally what we're going to do. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds logical. Well, then why that do people even die logical. in the first place? I don't get it. Uh, it's the bo- basically it's the bodies that get destroyed, not so the then soul. Your spirit comes back. Yeah, it wasn't exactly. why. Yeah, it's, we don't know how that's going to work exactly. That's hmm. that's yeah. what I was saying. But um, yeah, that that could be like um, the um, uh, crap. I forgot the name in uh, in the Star Wars universe where you rebuild the body. Um, the, oh, the maybe, cube, maybe we're like cubes. liches and we have like a phylactery, and when we die, our spirit <laughs> reforms our body. <laughs> I don't know. Let me ask you. Too much D&D. I don't know if either (laughs) of you played Guild Wars 2 very much, but there was one big problem with the resurrection in that game, and two things, really. One is that anybody could do it. You just ran up to them, pushed a button, and started resing them. But two, also, the Zerg, it really... When death didn't have any meaning and it was easy to resurrect, it empowered the Zerg, and it, it took away bad play, right? Like... That I think that's a big problem with a lot of games nowadays is it rewards bad play by Zerg taking fixed. away all the negatives. Yeah, so I mean, if yeah. you have a Zerg and you have a small group that is playing really well and they're defending and killing them off, that should have meaning, right? It should right? be like, rewarded. Right, like it it's, should... it's not like, oh, I just killed you and it didn't even matter because 20 people resed you really quick, right? It needs... It needs to not be like punitive, like the game hates you, but it can't, it can't reward the Zergs, right? Because Zerg... Nobody likes Zergs. I mean, who likes Zergs... Yeah, and that's the uh, one of the things I really want to see is I want to see a slower map progression. We have slower combat. I also want to see a slower map progression. I right. don't want to see somebody take a, a keep down in 20 minutes and then move over, and then within three hours they've moved an island over and attached it and everything. I don't want to see that. I want to see these things take days. And if, mm. if you attack a keep and you all get wiped out and you have to reset halfway across the map to walk right. back, that's going to slow things down a lot. <laughs> right. I mean, that's a whole. You're going to s- carefully plan your operations. That's a whole. I, I don't know why, but I keep thinking about that all the time. Why these games don't work, like Guild Wars 2 and ESO. And the problem is the maps are so small that Zergs can just run from point to point to point. Like Guild Wars 2, I timed it once from one corner of the map all the way to the other. It took like a minute and twenty seconds or something. And that's yeah, from it takes one a lot longer other. for ESO. But, but the problem uh, is, it doesn't. Everything matter. switches so fast. Right, and the, there's a huge map, but the thing is, 90% of it you don't use because you can just teleport yeah. from here all the way to the exactly. battlefront. So instead of being this big, it's actually this big, and everything's condensed. You just teleport from one right to the other. Yeah, we're we're not gonna have teleports. We might have roads to run faster. Mm-hmm. Um, I I guess here's my here's my question, Velk. We're talking about having a slower progression. How slow do you want it to take? Like let's say there's a big keep. I'm probably a bit on the on the extens- on the far end of this. I'm I wrote extreme. a I wrote a Realms Unchained article about this the other week. I really want it to be really slow. Like I want a keep to I think take, it should take a week. Like well no well, a keep, I'm not no, kidding. I think individual battles shouldn't take that long. Yeah. Like no, a I'm castle like might a whole... take a castle itself might take like an hour or two or two to take down if it's you know defended and everything. That's but true. to like reconnect the islands uh, and even stuff, you know, that. I want to see yeah. like the building a keep. I want to ta- see take like a week or you know a strong a good strong keep. I want to see that take like yeah. a week. I want to see moving islands to take a week or two. You know, to really maybe maybe the closest ones to your faction might be shorter. You know, they might not take that long. Yeah, the, but when you start getting towards the middle of the, the map, I want to see that take a long period of time. I, I think it should take longer. If you spent a week or two building this giant awesome keep it, it should take, take it. at least four or five hours to take it no way it, hours it, it has, that it could happen to... overnight i'm saying at least 24 hours well that's the thing it, the it, longer it takes to, to build the keeps that. the longer it has to take to take them otherwise yes, you're gonna log exactly. out and the whole wipes the map that, exactly <laughs> that's what i meant remember it it's depends not... on how you build the keep the better you build it the, the bigger the walls the stronger the walls the longer it will take to take them down you, you build a mansion in an, in an hour or even less you can take it if you build a keep a star keep i take the, the example of the keeps i know uh that i've visited in france we have a lot of those a star keep should take hours days even because they are basically impregnable because every corner of the keep can defend the other one so those things should take very long time to to actually take all right i think we're talking about two different things you guys i think are talking about the actual fight right 
The actual yeah, like both. Con- okay, I, I agree with you linked. there. I think they're linked. Well, yeah. I don't think so because I think the actual fight could take <laughs> two or three or four hours, right? For like a full blown war with hundreds of people on each side. Yeah. But let's say the attackers kill everybody in the keep and they're all gone. I think that at that point, it should take like at least a day, if not more, because you can tear down the keep. You can take the rocks and the bricks and all that stuff down. Yeah, okay, yeah. That oh, I think should take. That, oh, yeah, tearing I, that. Okay, oh, yeah. yeah. That no, I, to I destroy a keep. Owning, oh, yeah. owning the keep. Right. You can own the keep. I, I don't know how they're going to do that, but maybe switching the keep to your own faction. Uh, I don't know if it's even uh, necessary. Because the moment you, those should be objectives that make the map switch to your own faction. The moment the map switch, you don't have to actually own the castle itself, since there there's gonna be pretty much no NPCs there. Uh, you kill the NPCs during the fight, so you hire your own. You don't need like in ESO uh, to take the the flag to put it to your own faction, but right. just taking the keep. It might not be. Uh, necessary or even strategically good to tear down the keep just keep it rebuild it and use it for yourself but right. if you want to strip it down and take the resources i agree it should take, it should, it should take, it should take a while to do that because yeah. it I'm takes in- a long time to build it so it should also take a while not as long but it, it should still take a while to strip it down and take the resources right. away which means you have to defend it while you're doing that yeah you exactly. have to defend if, and if you let's say you go you, your <laughs> guild makes this huge awesome keep you go to bed somebody overnight starts attacking it maybe they take it over right there in the keep now you go to work or whatever i should be able to come back 12 hours later and go what they're in our keep, get a posse together, and go back out 12 hours after they initially took it and not have it be completely destroyed, right? Like, that's my keep. Give it back, right? I want my keep back. <laughs> yeah, because I, I want to see them take a long time to be built. And if someone's going to pick it up, no, if someone's going to smash it with catapults, that doesn't take that long. Right. <laughs> but if they want to salvage all the resources, I think that should take a while to do because it's, it should be a lot of resources. Yes. Um, to you know to pull it apart definitely Uh, you were talking about npcs earlier i know a lot of people who look at pvp games and rvr games especially dark age of camo players you bring up trials of atlantis and they go into a fit (laughs) of rage how do you guys feel about you were talking about npcs and guards how do you feel about adding these pve elements and npcs I don't think it has ever worked well in any PvP game that I have seen. No? Never? I don't know of one where it's worked well. It was okay in Tiso. It wasn't bad in Tiso. Right. I, I felt it was okay there. Uh, they were preset guards that paced around uh, keeps. It kept having one or two people from just coming up and putting up a catapult exactly. and smashing your walls. So that was good. Uh, their implementation was okay with that. But other games, like, well, and, and then they uh, at one point they had the mercenaries you could drop down. I don't think that worked very well at all. Right. Yeah. And uh, other games, I think, have had similar things like that that I don't think have panned out I mean, very why well. Why do they even do it? They do it so one or two people can't take a keep in the middle of nowhere on off hours, right? It needs to be, I don't know. I, I like NPCs. Like I, I don't want it to be like questing or raiding in the middle of my PVP. Right. But if uh, someone else went to the trouble of getting resources, getting food or whatever it is to pay for these NPCs, I, I like NPCs. I, I mean, it should I be an upkeep for the, for the, for the castle. It should yeah. be one of the upkeeps. Convenient NPCs. It doesn't have to be fighters. Uh, right. It could be builders that actually strengthen the walls once it's built, making sure it's always at top shape. Uh, guards that actually simply make sure that the door is closed. Simple right. as that. They right. open and close the door when you enter the keep, so nobody forgets to just close the door and somebody barged in. Uh, things like that. Because if you don't have that's it, about it, I mean, people are always talking about how middle of the night, right? Like, you build a keep, I mean, you're not on 24 hours a day. Someone else, <coughs> wherever, they had the day off, they don't work on Tuesdays, they're from France or Australia. <laughs> and and you spend all this time building a keep, you don't want someone to come and just and take it. I thought, what about this? I always thought this would be a cool idea. What if when you log out, your character becomes an NPC? It has your Definitely. items, it has your abilities, it just becomes um, an NPC. I think that would right? be hard to program, but... Why? They have NPCs. Just give it I the same that, that, may, that would make NPCs too too powerful. 
That's that's possible. Too. It's not I good can, as good as I a regular player. Have, I can see having NPC guards to guard the keeps. You know, it's, like I said, Tiso did that, and it was okay in Tiso. I think the solution for that. Um, in, in, and NPC guards can be part of it, but I think a large part of the solution for that is that taking the area and taking control of it and taking the keep should take large amounts of time. I think having it take large amounts of time and slowing the progression across the map way down, I think that really so solves a lot of the problems because you look at EVE Online again, uh, it takes forever to go in there and claim a zone and take over someone's space station and ever because if they could just move in and take it, no one would ever control anything because the maps would flip around constantly. But because it takes a long time to do it, you have to people spend like months planning out these campaigns to go in there and take other people's resources and take their player owned stations and stuff. Mm. So if taking a player owned keep takes a considerable amount of time. Now, admittedly, I think for smaller keeps, it's not going to take as long, you know, things like that. Yeah. But, and I think in the front lines, that's mostly what you're going to see are smaller keeps in the front lines because they don't take as long to build. But someone shouldn't be able to go in the back line and we have this huge star fortress that we spent three weeks building. They shouldn't be able to come in and flip it overnight while we're gone. Yeah. Yeah, when we get back the next day, she should still be claiming that key, take it, trying to take that key and <laughs> yeah. trying to tear it down, and so we're going to show up and stop them. I still think what, my idea one, is awesome, Val. Like you try to jump over it. It would be great. I think it would be awesome because then you could be – imagine you're sitting at work and you pull up a web browser and it shows you what your NPC, your character is doing in the keep. You're not playing. Uh, in, in, the same, in the same idea, actually, since – uh, the code for the UI will be available since they said we could chat in game from a phone app. Yeah. Make an NPC guard that actually sends you a message on your phone when the keep is starting yeah. to be attacked. You I get a warning. Right. Log in, your keep is being attacked. I think it'd be uh, awesome. Things like that. I, I think it'd be awesome. I don't. I, I for, Foggy says you know you could leave a hundred alts in the keep. I mean, obviously things could happen. You could work around the system. I just think it'd be cool. I agree with you though, Velik. I mean, having a large area that takes a lot amount of time. I think it needs to take a long time. I think building a huge keep should take a month, and I think take tearing it down and taking it back should take a week. Like if I spend a month with <laughs> my guild building this huge castle, and you beat us over and over and over and over in a fight for a week to tear it down, yeah, I, I think it'd be cool. Deserve but. it. You deserve yeah, right. it. You deserve, or you have your entire faction with just rows of catapults beating down <laughs> right. on it. Well, and we can't come out there and kill you. Well, right, yeah. right. And then you, you won that. You can you can take my penis shaped cats. It's fine with me. <laughs> Let me ask you. This is something else that I've seen a lot on forums, and people are always talking about, especially in a PvP game. And let me ask, what about time to kill? We've talked about it a little bit as far as how long it takes what about the actual battle let's say it's one on one or five on five or a hundred because they said we should have a hundred on a hundred battles right yeah. huge battles how this, long this is another That's area that i'm really excited system. about camelon chain i really like the idea of the slowed down combat um it's because it you're getting old and you need <laughs> <laughs> wait hold on i gotta People what? always do point out, though, which is true, that when you've got like 20 people against 20 people, people are going to call shots. Right. They're going to go, hey, you, you 20 people, we're all going to hit that one guy and kill them. That's going to happen in a coordinated group, and it's really going to speed things up perhaps more than you It doesn't want. even have to be coordinated, though. Let's say you have, usually it's two lines. You're, with, you're outside of the range. People are moving around a little bit. And then one person's like, hey, I'm the man. I'm a tank. I'm a go out there. And he gets, he <laughs> no! gets, he gets one Charged. inch. Charged. One inch within the range, and the forty people who were just waiting with that fireball, <laughs> boom! He blows up. That, right? That's you. That's usually me if we have some kind of a dash or something. I was always doing that <laughs> SW tour. Right? I'd run out there with my Sith assassin and be like, "Hey, Lou boys!" And just charge straight into him, start Sith knocking assassin. people around I'm and everything. Beat you. Great. And then you're dead. <laughs> Okay. I'd die for it, but it was fun. I didn't care. Well, if we're gonna have <laughs> massive keep battles. You guys, we talked about it a little bit earlier. You guys think a massive keep battle with hundreds of people should take hours, three, four hours? I agree with that. I think that's good. What about what about a one v one? What about a single fight? One v one in a match that's you know they're kind of matched. They both should be in that fight, not one of them running away screaming because they're really squishy. <laughs> right. uh, personally, I would like to see it take a couple minutes. I mean, I would couple like minutes? to see. Yeah. I would like to, because the slower combat, we're doing slower telegraph moves and everything. We're right. not just constantly going hit, 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 hit. We're doing slower attacks and everything. I would like to see a fight like that take a couple of minutes. What other decently matched sort of 
you know, fight. What other games have combat that takes that long, do you think? None. None. I'm trying to think. I mean, of... dep depending on the match, even WoW has that kind of thing in dueling. Um, I remember fighting other melee people with my with like my paladin, and barring healing, which would make, turn it into you know freaking an hour long fight. But right. barring that, the fights would still take a couple minutes. I think sometimes people do underestimate how long the the fights take. They're yeah. like, oh, it's like a five second fight. Sometimes that does happen. Right. But in like a matched fight where you're actually like two melee warriors going up against each other, it does tend to take a little while longer. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, when you add that in, if you have slow combat, it kind of goes back to resurrection. You really have to have... If a fight is taking five minutes or ten minutes, when someone reses, they need to have... They can't come back in 30 seconds, right? Exactly. That, that would really mess it up. I think the interesting thing here is... I never played EVE, but EVE sounds like the best comparison of what we can expect from Camel in, Unchained. I think in theory, it's just not in practice since it is totally right. I mean, you're not going to use in laser actual beams. implementation of things. <laughs> right. And, you know, the they way it's going to feel. don't have the, yeah. so many things in the environment, so they don't have to worry about that for lag. And and, right. and there's a freaking something flying around my face. <laughs> but the way, that it, the way that it feels and the interaction, it's not just kill, kill, kill. You have all these other pieces that are that are part of it. Um, let, let's, Some things definitely could be. Right. There very similar is there anything that you really hope you don't see um in camera like mechanics and stuff i, I kind of talked about earlier one shots one shots right yeah, yeah. i, I yeah. don't want to see one shot abilities I don't permanent know. pvp buffs that you can earn <laughs> yeah permanent <laughs> buffs are earned. no way yeah like oh i am now the emperor of this land and i have a permanent buff because <laughs> right of that's right. fair. That's great. That yeah. works out. I really didn't like the way Resurrection worked in Guild Wars 2 where anyone could do it. I wasn't a fan of that. Yeah. Um, I don't like the teleporting in ESO because that makes the map really, uh, really small. That's yeah. like, You know what thing I really did like? Don't add Battlegrounds. Right. Oh, oh Battlegrounds. Right. <laughs> no Battlegrounds. Uh, you can add arenas. I like the arenas uh, in You EQ, can do arena out which, in RVR. Which you were... Could. Yeah, but it, <laughs> I mean arenas like they did in EQ, which is basically... And then close the area. You pass the door. You reflect PvP. Simple as that. Anybody can enter. It's not a closed time thing. It's uh, it's gladiators. You enter the arena. You fight. Simple as that. No time. No win. The, the only win you have is killing the other. No points. No nothing. It's just training, basically. I always thought it'd be awesome to have something like that, and then let other people just sit in the stands and watch fights all exactly. day. I would do that yeah. all day. Here's I would love question. to do that. I would love that. It'd be awesome, and it'd be even cooler if they had a system. You in could game. build it in our VR, right? Exactly. <laughs> we could build it in the RVR. You know, we could build city. an arena. The when, thing when is, we'll though, why is going to happen now? Right, you, Alex Baldspot Arena. If they have <laughs> dueling, if they have dueling, you could make an arena, and people could come and sit and just watch people duel. Yeah. It, here's the question, though. I, I, a lot of games kind of are shying away from having dueling. I don't know why they don't have it when the game comes out. If there was dueling, would it take away from the rest of PvP? Not I as many it, people. If, if, if the there's no I reward see. for dueling, I don't think so. If you just right. have dueling just for competition, just to enjoy yourself, I think it adds to the overall game because you can have contests, you can have tournaments, you can do all kinds of cool stuff that's really fun right. and doesn't necessarily detract from the RVR because people aren't going to be doing it all the time. Right. Especially if there's no rewards or anything. And I think a huge part of it is how social it is. You can meet people, you can test specs, you can talking people on the guild, like, hey, how did this work how did you it adds that whole social theory element crafting right theory crafting i mean i don't understand why you wouldn't especially especially in a game like that you need theory crafting tools mm -hmm. because building your own abilities you will have to do some tests and right. the best way to test that is dual Right. Yeah, I hate I hate to say this steal a mechanic from WoW, so I'll just say <laughs> steal it from the SW Tour who stole it from WoW. <laughs> just flag somebody for duels. I mean, you go in there, you make make it so people of the same faction can flag each other for a duel, and no right. one can intervene, and they can just go, "Hey, we're gonna fight one on one." And then, and people love it. People love it. You go outside of Stormwind or Orgrimmar, and there's dozens and hundreds of people just standing around talking, socializing, fighting, testing. I mean, that's I don't understand why you would not have that in a game it's like oh we're not gonna have chat boxes i guarantee you if you do that we, at some point we will see some guild will make it their entire purpose to build an arena and they will go on the rvr zone and build an arena for people to fight and that would be awesome they, they, and i would hang out there honest, honestly uh I, my end goal for cu 
for our guild is making this uh, guild city. In that city, I want an arena to host tournaments like that. And then you reward those tournaments. Uh, you you make official player run events. Yeah, whoever wins. That's gets a, really I love player run PvP tournaments and other type of events mm-hmm. like that. They're great. Yeah, a- we see them in all games as much as they can possibly come up. They're in all, they're in like every other PvP MMO and other MMOs. Uh, even in SW Tour, we had our guild had PvP tournaments within the guild itself, where people go in and duel against each other. No, not all the classes are balanced. They can't be, but hey, there's always someone that's a little bit cheesy. I remember we had this uh, the last time we did a PvP tournament within our guild. We had this one guy that was playing an agent. I don't even remember what his build was. I think it was like a close range melee agent build, and he tore everybody. Up. We could not take him on. It That's was terrible awesome to see that. Like, but yeah. we were like, "Hey, he won fair and square. He beat the crap out of all of us." <laughs> and that's awesome to see because when you're out in the middle of a PvP fight, you are more focused on that. You miss that stuff, right? Like, yeah. I mean, for, Foggy's in chat is talking about how you wouldn't want specific places for it, and I think with this open world, you could kind of put it anywhere, and it's at risk. You make this huge coliseum, which is just kind of for fun, and the enemies could come take it and steal all your resources. Like, and you could exactly. announce a PvP tournament, and the enemy decides they're going to crash your tournament and come in there and try to kill right. it. Right. It just adds all this stuff. <laughs> exactly. I mean, think just this one little simple mechanic of being able to duel added all of this content, which is a ton of fun I, and I would be a part of. Um, I, I think it would be awesome. I, I mean, obviously, you can't have it where it maybe it doesn't give you skill points and abilities. It builds um, role play as well. Yeah, I mean, always yeah, in favor of. I mean, you could have an RP scenario where someone's getting executed. If you can't fight faction within faction, you can't possibly do that. Right, you need unless, to unless they add an emote where you just die. Oh, I have the slash die <laughs> <high> emote. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. All right, we're starting a petition. Anyway, we're digressing. We're starting a petition. We have to start duels to make sure it's totally, yeah. it is i think it's huge i don't i think i think it's, I think it's something that's probably very easy for them to add in there mechanically it and it like adds it. a lot of potential to them es- especially games. since and most uh, games have it they yeah. they kind of hinted that there won't be a uh, friendly fire so you won't be able to attack your own faction right so if you don't have duel there's no way to fight to actually compete against each other in your own faction you yeah. will have to do that against others, and it makes look at ESO. It makes dueling or testing build a pain in the ass. Yeah, it's, <laughs> and especially I mean, this game is going to be so much more with all the components and things. I mean, yeah, you you definitely knew. I mean, Super Dork in chat is talking about how people will complain, like, "Oh, my class got beat by this other class." Like, they're going to do that anyway, right? People do it anyway. You can't yeah. be, you can't be scared of what someone might say if you give them. The, it's like. I'm going to deny you the information so maybe you don't complain about it. Like, And I don't think they're going to do that. I mean, that's not their attitude. That's not their opinion. I definitely hope they add dueling so we can do all this fun. Yeah. As awesome Foggy stuff. just said, annual Olympics. I yes. want to see it. <laughs> you could, no, you could <laughs> totally do it. Olympic I would games. love that. You could make like a maze. That. You can make a maze with the building system <laughs> and people can run the fastest yep. than the maze. You can have hurdles and jumping over it. You can have feats of strength where you get like sumo wrestling because there's going to be physics whoever's <laughs> yeah, the biggest the mass, with the mass yes <laughs> like, knock the other person out of the ring <laughs> yeah oh, there's gonna be so many fun <laughs> ideas you can, i don't all right anyway lots of fun <laughs> we've kind of digressed from pvp and yeah. the combats is is there anything else there's one thing here at the end i want to show if someone's watching this on youtube or in chat hasn't seen it we have a couple of little updates from andrew megs the i did uh, i did have one other uh thing i wanted to mention uh, before we go off of PvP, that you, we were talking about how EVE Online really does cater, some some aspects of it really do cater to the systems we're seeing, and I wanted to mention alliances. And alliances from EVE Online, the way they set them up, they work, they, it's great, it's almost all textual, so it's, it's just interfaces, it's not right. a matter of like tons of me- different mechanics and stuff. And going into planet side, Group coordination mechanics. Mm-hmm. They, you know, you get, you flag things on maps and go. We're attacking this area. This group is attacking this area, just so that the group leaders can see that and go. Okay, they're here. They're here. We're right. gonna do whatever we want to. That sort of coordination and tools for the different leaders, I think, is fantastic. And I've seen it in almost no other MMO. Well, let's let's and talk really about annoying. the first part you said about alliances, Velik. Sell me on alliances because right now in my head I'm thinking. 
Why do we need alliance? Multi gilding. I'm, I'm, I'm part of a realm. I'm part of a realm. These people can't attack me. Like in Eve, oh, my light just went out here. Uh, in Eve, anybody can attack anybody if they wanted to. Yeah, it definitely here, doesn't have as much purpose as it does in Eve. Right. But the main thing I would see it for is objectives. Okay. Uh, so you can you can make like your alliance chat. It's mostly a chat. You can see your alliance chat, and you have this guild, this guild, this guild, or in this alliance, and you can go coordinate and go. Okay, this alliance is focusing on this area of the map. This is their objective. They're taking this. It's all about meta game. This alliance is over here, and they're defending this keep. They're defending the arena. This week they're defending the arena. That's their main goal. Or they're taking the depths and they're holding it for us so that our other people, all of our other guilds, can make can exploit it and make use of it. Yeah. Uh, it's really just a coordination tool. Well, that kind of ties uh, and, into and your and second. Resources, also resources, focusing resources. You're part of the, an alliance. Uh, you say, okay, this week we're helping building. All the crafters help building this guild's keep. The next week it's going to be the other one. That's more manpower, more resources. That's cooperation. That's more an alliance. For a lot of people, alliance sounds like multi-gilding. And I hate multi-gilding, but yeah, a no. real alliance, yeah, a real alliance is cooperation. It's, it's a chat box. It's a, it's a chat box, <laughs> but it's the spirit of it. It's yeah. actual cooperation. Right. More than just guilt saying, exactly, work. exactly. Yeah, and that's the second part you're talking about, having options like being able to ping the minimap to say i'm doing this but it's not just like instantaneous maybe something like a maybe in the main city like a board like a a notification yeah. board that says hey you know lg order veritas this week we are trying to take this or hold the depths or yeah. trying to whatever it is and I think the main people. thing is not everyone's going to want to see these types of communication. And right. you may not want everyone to see it because just because we're faction locked doesn't mean someone else hasn't paid for a second account to get on your faction right. and eavesdrop no, on all your activities. They will. Somebody's going to do that. So you may want a limited number of people in your alliance chat going, hey, okay, this is what we're doing. We don't necessarily want to spread this to everybody because exactly. otherwise the other faction is going to know about it. Yeah. But you need that sort of coordination so it's not just like – Otherwise, you're kind Otherwise of playing by beca- yourself. It, it's getting a, it's becoming a zerg after that. If you you don't have an alliance that actually organizes things, uh, especially in big battles, because yes, there will be huge guilds with more than two hundred players organizing things by themselves. But for a lot of guilds, it's going to be small, 50, 60, 30 people guilds. If they don't have an alliance, uh, how do they coordinate? It's, you want to be able harder. to feel like you're part of it, part of the whole exactly. thing. What about the king, though? You know, they've talked about how the king can give out rewards and things like that. Can't <coughs> they? Because they've also talked about um, the like bounty system and stuff. Can they put that out there? Hey, as the Arthurians, our goal is to try to take this mine over here and establish it. Go do that. And Didn't then you know, MJ is everyone's king. Right, I'm saying, right. <laughs> but is the, the the king mechanics an illusion? He's just gonna be over there pressing right, buttons. Right, yeah. everyone take your pants <laughs> off every, and for every server, everyone make <laughs> duck sounds. Now I'm the king. Quack, just, quack, 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 right, quack, quack. but can't the king do that? Like, isn't that? I think that part? that's a thing they could have. Uh, they had that in Planet Side. Um, mm-hmm. Yep. The faction announces and goes, hey, this is an objective that we're going to have on the map. We need to take this base. You get bonus loot if you go take this base. And so the faction gets bonus stuff if they manage to take that base. Uh, that's a thing they could do. And yeah. then as a, you don't have to everybody just run there and fight. You can make a bunch of items for people to go out there. You can take parts further out and scout and maybe set up a tower to defend that place. I mean, yeah, mm-hmm. that... I think that would be a good way to do it because it's kind of yeah, a part of the As system. Lujate, I still don't know how to say his name. Lujate kind of sort of saying in chat, um, leader only chat, alliances aren't the only way to coordinate that stuff. There are other systems. Uh, for instance, like Planet Side doesn't really have like a robust alliance system. Instead, there are like chats. In Planet Side 1, there was a chat you could only get to if you had a certain number of leadership points, which you got from leading groups. So once you participate in your so faction, a, cer- in a certain too. mount, then you get access to this chat where you can go talk to the other leaders in the faction and then coordinate without spilling it over into all as the As long as it's channels. in game. I hate it when they say, oh, we'll just go use a forum. Just go use TeamSpeak. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, give me no, the tools. No, it needs in to be game. in game. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's got to be in game. And, since and it's with social components, a UI thing. website, yeah, with ahead. social components, we get it on our phone and talk in the in game chat. Right? And be like, yes, what's yeah, up? Exactly. What are we, what's our plan this week? 
Yeah, I, exactly. I, you, you keep you, you stay connected all the time. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we want to keep it connected. I think there's a lot of good things going to be in PvP. I Hopefully, I'm sure the developers have learned lessons from past games. I, I don't think we're going to have to worry about this instant travel stuff, uh, instant you oh, know, wow. one-shot kills and stuff like this. I, I'm definitely looking forward to it. Um, they have announced that they're going to start getting some maybe more beta people in in the next few months. Um, more right. tests ramping up, doing more stuff. They've already put out the video we've been watching here of combat from Alpha. Um, I just want to show this because this was some new information that we got. But Andrew Meggs, the lead uh, programmer Engineer. and designer, put this Engineer. out on his uh, Twitter showing some destruction. This is built all with little blocks. And then they're destroying. Obviously, it's like the very first time they, you know, like first yeah. pass. Um, also, in tandem with that, here's some blocks that show. So just showing physics, and I'm just imagining these giant castles and huge trebuchets, you know, blowing <laughs> them up, um, just being exactly. amazing. And, and and then the wall falling on you and doing damage as well. Right. Because also, I'm so I'm sorry, but you take half a wall on your face, you have to take damage. Right. It just it doesn't so, yeah. just push you away. It just crushes you. And that could be defensive or offensive problems. I mean, exactly. they could even make it so that people could do spells and push the wall out themselves. Fine, you take down our wall, whoo, we'll push it back and it'll fall on top of <laughs> you if you get too close. You. Yeah, I, I'm excited. There's all kinds of stuff they could do. Lots of cool stuff. They also showed some new, like, uh, the graphics and shader stuff just for the terrain. Mm -hmm. It's looking much prettier and nicer than yep. it had in the past. So... Good stuff coming. If you're a beta tester, keep your eye out. You might be getting invites. Cross your fingers. Uh, real quick, round the horn. Last thing, Chris, Velik, last thoughts, comments on other games, what you hope to see, not see. I I'll just start. I think it's really exciting. I think if you combine the EVE sort of economy, meaningful uh, system with a Dark Age of Camelot, slower combat Add that together with a building system that can be destroyed. This honestly can be a one of a kind game, and I, I think they're going to pull it off. I, I think it's going to be amazing. Um, I don't think pe I think most people are not I, I, not ready for it. Like they're going to hop in, and after a week, after a month, after a year, they're going to go. What I the never hell is that? I never expected this to be so awesome, right? Like honestly, it could be that completely game changer. What do you think, Chris? Um, there's one game, it's probably going to be, if it ever happens, it's going to be in an extension. But um, I know it's, in many ways, it's a pretty crappy game, the way it's been handled. But Arch Age uh, Naval Combat mm -hmm. was really what hooked me on the game. And since it's islands, right now it's going to be NPC-led uh, boat travel. But eventually, having crafters building boats... And fighting on boats between islands, I would love that. Chris wants to be That's, a pirate. <laughs> I do. <laughs> That's right. That yeah, yeah. Like you said, it'd that probably be, be an expansion, but that would that would yeah. be pretty awesome. Velik, what what about you? To play on that, what if you could set up catapults, and as they're sailing across the little islands, you can <laughs> shoot them oh, down right right yeah. now. Anyway, um, honestly, the main thing I was I'm I was really want, I'm really wanting, and I really want to see is that are those meta game coordination abilities in game. I really want different fact different groups within the same faction to be able to coordinate, to be able to plot things on maps and say we're going here, you're doing this, so on and so forth, so that everything can be easily coordinated and controlled. Controlled, so that the main the major guilds can control things. That was going to be my main thing to go on about until you start talking about dueling, and now I just really want that. And you know, we can just. <laughs> no, I definitely agree. You need to add all these social elements, so it's not just a solo game with other people, or just your guild and everybody else doing their own thing. Make it a whole community. Bring everybody. Give us the tools to play together and have a common goal. We'll definitely add social game, social add, uh, gaming back. I, I want to see that very badly because uh, MMOs have become have become MMO solo games. Yeah, you you have thousands of people on servers, but everybody plays alone. Yeah. MMOAs, uh, massively multiplayer yeah. online alone. Yeah, and they used to be the original social game. So. Thank exactly. you so much for watching, everybody. You can check Velik out on Twitter. Follow him at Xenoduck. And you can always talk to Chris at RealmsUnchained.com. Continue the conversation there. Thank you so much for watching. And we will see you. Well, wait. Are we doing next week? Are we taking next uh, week? I won't, be there. I won't be there next, yeah. next week. Yeah. So. We were
skipping next week. Depending so. on when you're watching, we will not be. We're going to start doing every other Saturday until we get more information out. We're going to go to every other Saturday. So June 20th will be off, and then we'll be back June 27th. So we will see you there.